going first. Welcome everyone, thanks for being here. Um, we'd like to uh, introduce you to a campaign called Everyone is Welcome. It's a collaborative between the Adelaide and Port Adelaide Football Clubs and the Stadium Management Authority about crowd behaviour here at Adelaide Oval. We don't believe that we have any particular issues, but on the back of this growing reputation of this amazing stadium as being one of the best in Australia, if not the best, we're very keen to make sure that everyone is welcome, both in terms of South Australians and from interstate. So whether we agree with it or not, like it or not, um, recent history elsewhere would dictate that there's a perception Australia-wide that to come to Adelaide is to come to a relatively, relatively hostile place in terms of the crowd. And we want to break through that to make sure that at this amazing stadium that we have the most welcoming uh, environment in terms of service and the most welcoming environment in terms of the spirit with which we uh, barrack for our teams. So as a result, um, for the last few weeks, both clubs with the Stadium Management Authority have got together. Uh, we've worked up collaborative and collective codes of conduct uh, that have been refined as both clubs. We've worked with the Stadium Management Authority in, on... Um, on protocols uh, in game time. Uh, there's some promotional activity that you'll start to see as well. So that around Australia, not only will people say, it is a great stadium, the building is wonderful, it's here on the doorstep of the city. They'll say that they've had a great experience when they've come in terms of the patronage and uh, the service that they get. Well, Adelaide Oval holds a, a special place in the heart of uh, all South Australians. And it's been extremely important for the Stadium Management Authority to uh, to work with the Adelaide Football Club and the Port Adelaide Football Club in this, what I think is an outstanding campaign, that everybody is welcome at the Adelaide Oval. We've seen an enormous uh, kick up in, in the number of interstate uh, fans coming to the Adelaide Oval to enjoy watching these great games here. Our job now is to make sure that we actually continue to grow the reputation of, of Adelaide and Adelaide Oval as being a welcoming place where bad behaviour is not tolerated great, robust, vocal uh, enjoyment of the game and supporting of the teams is absolutely fantastic, but that, that makes sure that that line is not crossed. We, Andrew, would you be able to run us through a few of the security specs, just how many security guards may work any given day, how many cameras there are around the Oval? Uh, certainly. We have about 80 security guards working, uh, working at each game. Uh, the number of uh, evictions and behaviour has been very, very low, or bad behaviour has been very, very low. There's an average of about four or five evictions per game, which given that we're averaging 47 to 50,000 people, uh, you've got one per 10,000. Uh, so crowd behaviour to date has been extremely good. What we really want to do is work very closely with Port Adelaide and the Adelaide Football Club to ensure that that good behaviour continues. And in fact, that the reputation of both the clubs here, uh, the stadium and the city uh, is really improved and we get even more people coming to this great uh, city of Adelaide and watching our AFL games. Is alcohol a problem and will you be addressing that? Um, well, no, not particularly. I think you actually can see that within the very low number of, uh, of evictions. What you do have uh, at football games is people are very focused on the game. Uh, so it's a very uh, intense experience for, for a couple of hours uh, to really watch and enjoy uh, AFL football. Uh, we take our responsible service of alcohol uh, extremely seriously as we need to and as is our moral responsibility so not a particular problem we just want to make sure that problems don't develop and that the right reputation is is really fostered here what at about the now, that's probably more for the clubs but do, would you be putting your fans on notice here is there, is there going to be a zero tolerance as far as clubs putting your fans on notice about having membership suspended things like that well, the ability to suspend memberships has always been there um, and in line with what's been said today is that there'll be a tightening up, no doubt, about uh, uh, the activities on match days and so forth. There's some shades of grey in there, of course. I mean, that's what you're talking about is what's acceptable sometimes in terms of language and what's not. I think, to go back to the point, is would you behave like that around kids? And if the answer is no, then, uh, then don't do it. And so there'll be some tightening. Now, you've always had the ability to be able to cancel a membership. I'd also go back to the point about evictions. It, it is the end game, um, and that will usually lead, usually, to a, um, a suspension of membership. That's happened in the past. Uh, but to your point about what's triggered this is that whilst the number is very low, and it's uncanny at the moment that for both clubs, about 500,000 people have passed through the gates so far, uh, and there's been 51 uh, um, evictions. So as Andrew says, it's one in 10,000. 
So in real terms, it's a very low number, but it's, you still don't want any. So that's really what we're talking about, is just to try and get on top of those few issues that we have. Uh, and, uh, and yeah, the clubs will need to play their part in terms of the communication process and any actions against, um, against breaches. If you want evictions out of well, 500,000 people yeah. or whatever, how does that rate? Do you know how that rates to other grounds? Around well, my understanding is that's low. Low generally, but yeah. the other thing that should be said about that is the vast majority of those, and I don't have quite the number for you, but the vast majority of them are not members of the club. They're either visitors or they are daily ticket purchasers. So there's a, you know, I, th I think in defence of our own members, this shouldn't be portrayed as having a crack at our, our you know, our paid up members. It, it's not. It's a reminder to them, but it's also, it's a collective for everybody who comes to this stadium to make sure that it's as fan friendly as it can be. Just, just so that, you know, we played Collingwood here. We want there three or four thousand people who visited that yeah. particular night, the Thursday night, to come back. We want them to have a great experience and come back. And uh, um, that's good for the state. That's good for the football club. Uh, of both football clubs, and it's great for the stadium management. You guys have come together today for this campaign. Is this a good opportunity why you're all here to put to rest the speculation concerning stadium yields here for the clubs? Uh, well, stadium yields takes in uh, costs and uh, revenue distribution. Uh, we're on record as saying that the costs, we all know that they started relatively high in, in, in our collective view, that's all of our view, as we try to deliver, it's in keeping with what we're talking about here, the very best uh, product and service that we could in, in the early stages, so we all understand that, and collaboratively, bit by bit, we're working to get those down. That's a very, that's a very uh, uh, common position. Has it been more costly than you thought it was going to be? Uh, certainly, we factored that in, but uh, a little bit higher in the first instance than we even we expected. And again, uh, bit by bit, we're we're working on ways of making it uh, more cost effective, if you like. The other part that you're talking about is uh, is the revenue share. Uh, we w spent three years working up a, a revenue model and we all agreed, bought into the fact that there would be a review at some stage mid-season, as it turns out it'll be sort of two-thirds of the way through the season. It's a great time, we'll have seen how things have been operating and it's a chance for us to take stock. It's probably, probably there's been too much said publicly about it so far and, uh, and I think we'll just let the review take its course and uh, towards the end of that we'll be able to say more with it. With a bit more, uh, with a bit more detail. So when, when are you likely to negotiate re that, that re revenue carve up? Uh, well, <laughs> we're revisiting uh, all of that throughout the month of July, but I don't even think we've got a date set just yet, uh, other than July as the agreed uh, agreed starting point. Would you say that it's been a lot more successful than you thought, and you're, you're disappointed with the carve up? No, I think the one thing you should you started on the right tram there is to say that this has been a, an incredibly positive outcome for Adelaide, for Port Adelaide for the Stadium Management Authority for the State of South Australia. Don't lose sight of that, okay? So I know what happens is that uh, there's a, a bit of a grizzle that gets aired and all of a sudden it's a, it's a major issue. Now, it's a significant enough issue that we've agreed to meet um, right from the outset, but this is a fantastic outcome for everybody and we shouldn't lose sight of it. Okay. Triggy, just on the on-field, what's your take on uh, how the club's performing this season? Oh, it's a pretty easy, easy summary, and it's a mixed bag, isn't it? It's a mixed bag from week to week, and it's a mixed bag within games for us at the moment. So we're trying to iron out that inconsistency. Uh, it often comes with inex relatively inexperienced sides, but smoothing that out is a challenge not just for us, but for a whole bunch of teams in the mid mid pack at the moment. So, and unfortunately, we found ourselves caught up in that mid pack, and we need to uh, to find that consistency as soon as we can. So, how important is this week then? Uh, they when you go zero three at the start of the year, there's not a lot of margin for error. And so every week becomes critically important, including this week at home versus North Melbourne Saturday night in front of a well-behaved bumper crowd. <laughs> <laughs> Want to stay connected to the Crows? Like us on Facebook.